Okay, so uh, this video is all about the doors in the Bible and to make you aware of doors in the Bible, because I want to tell you that we're not going to hit on all of them today. There's absolutely no way we can hit on every single one of the doors in the Bible, but I can make you aware of the doors and being aware of the doors means that when you are studying, when you are reading, you'll see a door, you'll notice a door and you'll be able to highlight it, underline it, and you'll understand what it means. So today, I'm in my Andy Dandy Jesus Bible. This is going to be great. Um, I want you to get a couple of things for me. I want you to get your little sticky tabs. So we're going to journal. That's what we're doing. We are going to journal this. I'm going to walk you through it. We're going to do a lot of flipping around, a lot of reading. And when you leave here, you're going to have a really good sense of what doors in the Bible are, what they mean, and what they represent. So get you some little tabbies. If you don't have any tabs, um, I suggest that you use uh, a sticky note and just rip that bad boy. You can rip a sticky note where, let's see, let me... Still adding people in here. Um, do I have, yeah. If you got a sticky notepad, okay, where the sticky part is, you'll rip everything this way and you'll make, or use scissors and you'll make yourself little tabs. So do that. And I also want you to get a pen and one highlighter. Yes, one. You're like, Kelsey, how dare you? One, one highlighter. And preferably, I think I'm going to use a red one. You can use whatever color you want, but I'm going to use a red one because all of these boys, all of these boys, all of these doors point to Jesus. Um, all of these doors point to Jesus. It's going to be really good and all about him. So I'm going to use red. I'm going to give you a second to get your Bible that you're using, get your tabs and get your pen and your highlighter. And then we are going to. We're going to get started while you are getting everything one highlighter how rude while you are getting everything okay tell me something what do doors do what do doors do and this is not a tw trick question what do doors do they open things they they keep they open things to enter in but they also keep things out I love that. Yes. Open and close. Open and close. Yes. Yes. Where'd that come from? Here we go. Um, yes. That is so good. All right. Hitting buttons, y'all. Okay. That is so good. So they do open and close, but I do love how Dina said it. They keep things in and they keep things out. All right. This is some good stuff. That's the main point. So a door also, I wrote down, helps us gain access to something, right? Or it keeps us away from something. So for example, if your friend comes to your house and knocks on your door, right? What do you do? You're usually so excited. You open the door and you let them in, right? You're like, oh, you're here. Yay, I love it, right? And you're opening the door and you're letting them come in. But then what happens when an intruder comes to that door? You do not let them in. When an intruder comes to that door, you keep that door shut and you might even lock that bad boy if it's not already locked because they're not coming in. So that door allows your friends to come in and also keeps your enemies out. And that's the viewpoint we are going to take on this. Now, um, you need to write that down, but I don't really know where you want to write that down at. Maybe you just write that on a sticky note and put that in your Bible anywhere you want to. What a door does for you. Um, <laughs> I love that, Amanda. He heard you. His answer was hide from any knock. <laughs> Listen, save. Like, does somebody knocking on your door be like, who is no, pretend we're not here. Cut off all the lights. Cut off all the lights. I can relate to that. I'm already hot. That's when you know the message is going to be good. I'm already hot. I ain't even got started. I only told you about a door. Whew. Okay. So, highly recommend that. I think I'm going to write it down on a form of a sticky note. 
because I've never journaled this in my uh, Jesus Bible. So uh, I'm just going to write on a sticky note, doors of the Bible. And you know what? Oh, I just had a really good idea. You could. I'm going to use this. So I have my sticky note. I put doors of the Bible at the top. Then I'm going to write this definition I'm about to give y'all. And then every place we go and read, I'm going to write it on this sticky note. And then I'm going to tab it with my tabs. That way, though, when somebody is, you may think, Kelsey, ain't nobody ever going to talk to me about doors in the Bible. I'm going to tell you right now, you lying. I have had the weirdest things happen to me. People will walk up to me and start talking about things of the Bible. And I'm able just to whip that note right out. Be like, what do you want? Where you want it at? Right? Let me tell you about it. So, it's a good guide. It's a good guide to keep at the front of your Bible, um, and then you'll have your tabs throughout. So, doors of the Bible, definition of it, right? That's what that's what what the main purpose of them is. You can write down however you want, but I'm going to write it down to gain access or to deny access, right? And I might say it fast, but then I'll type it in the chat box. Open and receive. Closed equals deny. Right? So I'm going to type it in the chat box for us. You know what? No, I'm going to do it like kind of like I do our Zooms. I have a really good idea. Granted, it might take me a little bit longer, but I don't think y'all would care, right? As long as y'all get the good notes. And get to journal at the same time. Let me create. Got ideas here. Oh. Will you will you post those in the membership later for us? For you, yes, Dina. <laughs> because I, I'll be on the road here in a few minutes. No, I will. I got you. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I always give y'all all the goods. All right, hold on. I'm getting it set up here. All this is going to be is like a journaling instruction. That way, that way none of y'all are like, I might not get all the notes. You'll be able to see what I got here. All right. Perfect. All right. Actually, I'm going to do this. What you'll, I need to make this smaller, but what you'll need to remind me to add that. And I'll add that at the end because I've already told y'all what y'all need. All right. Now, use a sticky note as a guide. Take this halfway across here. Use a sticky note as a guide. Right at the top. Doors of the Bible. And write the definition. So, to gain access or to deny access. Also, Emma Sky, no ma'am. Opening, opening equals receiving and closing equals deny. Some of y'all gonna learn is I'm not a good speller. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. That just means I must say that a lot. All right. This way, y'all have all the things. Okay, now we're going to turn in our Bibles. Turn in our Bibles to Genesis 6, 16. All right. Let's go there. Genesis 6, 16. And you're also, that's going to be your little first one that you add to your sticky note. All right. Yes, I did, Brandy. 
I shall will post it to the mentorship uh, after I make it all pretty. I'll make it all pretty when we get off of here. All right, so turn to your Bibles. Genesis 6, 16. We're going to read it first. So it says, make a roof for the ark and finish it for, finish it to the cubic above and sit. Hold on. All right. Lost some place there. Hold on. And sit the door of the ark in its side. Make it, make it with lower second and third decks. Now, I do want you to highlight this one because this is talking about the art door and then we're going to go somewhere else. So this is where God has instructed him to put a door on this art. And then when you get that highlighted, let me know. And then we're getting ready to pull it together. Listen, this is how journaling works. You start somewhere. It don't start making sense till the end. But by the time you leave here, you're going to have such a good understanding. It ain't going to be fun. Turn to our Bibles, Genesis 6, 16, read and highlight. Next, let me find my next part while y'all are doing that. I don't have that one on here. all right there it is oh that's so good there it is all right now genesis 7 7 16 oh how ironic look at the lord lord and right there 7 16 it mentions the door again what does it say it says and those that entered male and female of all flesh went in as god had commanded them we're gonna highlight this and shut him in all right, so we've looked at these two verses right here, and now we know that Noah was shut in. Noah, his family, those animals, the Lord shut him in. That door was not opening. It was shut, and nothing was coming in, and nothing was going out because the flood was near. So what did that door do for Noah, his family, and those animals? What did that door do? Those Protect the protected them. Protected them. Yes, that's one of it. Protected them. What else? I would say it set them apart. Being willing to get on that ark set them apart. They were set apart from the world, they were about to be saved. Right? That door represents the separation of God's judgment and his protection. Right? So, it protected them. This is just going to get better. It protected them. It set them apart from God's protection and God's judgment. Right? This door, like all the others, will represent, well, will slash does represent salvation. That's good. So for my note, I wrote it protected them. It set them apart. I am going to also highlight my note. Y'all know me. I'm going to draw a little arrow up to my note. And then I'm going to take one of my little tabs and I'm going to tab this. And I'm going to tab it the door of the ark. 
the door of the ark. Door of ark. It don't even gotta make sense, friends. You just need, you need to write down, and you, your notes don't have to match my notes. Your notes need to be in a form where you're going to remember what you're studying. It don't gotta make sense to nobody but you. This is your Bible study. This is what you are learning. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody but you. So I tabbed it, door of art. I love that. I love clever little things about the Bible. How Genesis 6, 16 is talking about the door. And then Genesis 7, 16 is talking about how the door shut. I mean, that's just perfect. That's just perfect. I love when the Lord do that. Mm, telling you right now. All right. So the art door, we learned doors helps us gain access, deny access. It helps us receive. It helps us deny, right? So Noah going into that ark, showing the showing that he trusted the Lord, right? He trusted God to, to do what he said he would do. So he got in that ark and the Lord shut him in. The Lord shutting him in shows that God was protecting him. He was caring about him. He was going to save him from this. I want to promise you right now, though, go read 816. Oh, hold on. And then, oh my goodness, a oh man, 816 says, go out from the ark and your wife and your sons and your son's wives with you. I tell you what, I'm highlighting that one too. Look at that. If all three of those verses do not tell a story, you better have highlighted them the same way. They tell the story about God instructing to make the door, right? Jesus is coming as the door would be its equal part. The Lord shutting them in. That's us receiving our salvation, getting uh, our access to, to Jesus and heaven and God and protection and just all of those things. And then 16, go out from the ark, right? Oh my goodness. Represents our, our eternity in heaven, friends. We get to go out from this world and into eternity in heaven because we went through the door. Oh my goodness. That's so good. That is good. I love it. Look at, look at the Lord. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Look, and I'll just, we'll just keep going real quick and then I'll stop. Uh, 9 16 talks about the covenant. The everlasting covenant between God and every living creature on of all flesh that is on earth. Ooh, that that could get like that could be a real good study. That could go deeper. We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna stay on task, but that's good. All right. So we have learned that that door protected Noah and his family right? That door kept them from harm's way. And I want to tell you something, because this is just, I'm y'all know me, I'm going to apply life application to everything that I teach. We ain't just going to journal. We're going to think about it. We're going to talk about it real quick. I would, I would argue that being locked in probably didn't feel as safe as we're making it sound. Yeah. You listen, I won't even go on a cruise because the thought of being out there in the middle of the ocean without being able to see any land around me is a hard pass for me. If I got a decision, I'm not doing it. No, thank you. OK, I don't like even being on a plane on the planes the same way. You cannot exit. And well, I mean, I guess you could, but I would I would advise not. Right. So in those moments, it really doesn't feel that safe because you're locked in. You, you cannot go anywhere. Even if you wanted to, there would be nowhere to go. Right? You can't. So the Lord shut them in. I mean, up until this point, Noah has been operating on his faith that God would do what he said he would do. He's building this ark. It took him 120 years or it might be 150. I don't know. There's too many numbers, but it took him a good, a hot minute. Okay. With all these people telling him that he's crazy and that this ain't never going to happen. There hadn't been rain up until this point. They really thought that Noah was just like crazy. Okay. So crazy. 
but he built that ark anyway. And he followed all the instructions and he went in. And then the Lord shut that door. I can promise you that it didn't feel good in that moment. What about when the waters came and the boat started to rise? It got all wibbly wobbly. All right. It started to rise. There ain't no telling how big those waves be being when they be run like that. Uh-uh. No thanks. I can promise you that that journey was scary. I don't care how old you are. Right? But that door protected them. Right? God made sure that no water came in. And nothing went out. His people, his creations, they were safe in that in that door. Right? That door represents God's protection in your life. And sometimes it might not feel like that. Sometimes it may not feel like you have protection at all. But you do. As long as you have went through that door and you are inside knowing that God's going to protect you. He will put that door. He will put it shut. And can't nothing get to you. It can't come in or out without your permission. Right? Let's go on to the next door. Let's go to Exodus 12. Get to Exodus 12 first. I got a lot of notes in this Bible. All right. Let's see. Let's see. It's being, wait. The being let out is like life after salvation, a whole new world. Yes, Amanda. I love that. Yes. But my membership besties are not scared to talk. <laughs> Praise the Lord, you showed up because I would be on here. All right. And we're good. Like, are we? All right? Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, uh, next, so highlight, I told you what to write down and then use a sticky tab to mark the page. Label it doors. All right, next we are going to go Exodus 12, all right, 7 through 13. This is going to be good. All right, so. Let's read this 7 through 13 here. Let me get my look at my right. Okay, I got it. All right. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts. And the lintel of the houses in which they ate it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roast on fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted its head with its legs and its inner parts and you shall not you shall let none of the rem of it remain until morning anything that remains until morning you shall burn in this in this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste it is the lord's passover for i will pass through the land of egypt at night and i will strike the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast be careful with it and on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy. Wait, will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So you are going to highlight it's going to be verse 13. I like verse 13 in your highlighting color, right? All right, let me paint the picture. 
We got the Passover. There's been all these plagues um, that Israel and Egypt has suffered through, or that Egypt has suffered through, the Israelites have suffered through some of them, but not all of them. And they've, I forget when we were studying this, I forget how long we think that this went on, but I think we said it was about a year, right? I think we said it was about a year that they suffered all these crazy things, all these, all these plagues, all this craziness, right? Well, it is finally about time for them to exit Egypt. All right. They about to get going. But first, there's something else that has to happen. And this is where the Passover starts. The Israelites were instructed to be ready, Freddie. All right. Literally, you can write that in your Bible if you would like on verse 12. They were instructed to be ready, ready. They had to have their, well, actually, it's verse 11. They had to have their belts fastened, the sandals on their feet, their staff in their hand. They had to be ready to go, all right? I talked all about this in my mentorship, right? They had to be ready to go, all right? And he said, but upon being ready to go, I'm also going to feed your bellies. All right. I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you good and full so that you have the, so that you have the ability to go on this journey. He says, all right, so you're ready. I fed you. Now go in your home, put the blood of this lamb on your doorpost. And the blood of that lamb is going to be the sign that you are my people and I will pass over you, right? So this door was was protection. This would be your note. From God's plague. It also points to the Messiah and the cross. Amen. Ooh, I love studying about stuff like this. All right. Because listen, this was atonement for all the Israelites that were that were going through this, right? This is how they were going to become out of it. But Jesus was going to be the atonement for the whole world. Jesus was going to be the door for the whole world. His blood was going to be uh, the door for the whole world. Every door in the Bible points to Jesus, right? I'm going to use another one of my stickies. And I'm going to write door of Passover. This is how you learn where things are in your Bible and you can quick reference it. Um, it's just by making yourself little notes and then tabbing it, right? Making yourself little notes and then tabbing it. So my note for, well, I already wrote down my note for this, but I haven't wrote down my note for this. So let me do that. Right? I love this. Protection from the plague. The door. Identified, ooh, the people as his, ooh, just like salvation identifies the people as yours. Your salvation identifies you as God's people. The door is salvation. It's been that from the beginning. It's been that from the beginning. You will find Jesus on every page of this Bible, Old Testament and New. He's the beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega, first and last. It's so good. Oh, I, mm, I cannot. Okay, we're going to. I'll be getting excited. Hold on. This is what it looks like when me and Angie study together. Y'all often wonder. I usually am already ready already. LOL, when I come and do my lives and stuff with people. But I thought that this would be really fun to do. And I don't think I was wrong. Um, okay, so we got it representing a salvation again. I think your biggest takeaway from this door is what I just said. Um, I'm going to type it. Hmm. 
I love when this thing. There we go. That's good. I don't care who you are. That's good. All right. Next, we got the temple door. That is going to be 1 Kings 6. So let's go to 1 Kings 6. We're going to jump, go all the way to the New Testament. Listen, and while we're turning, so 1 Kings, um, What's going to be really cool is when you go on your journey reading your Bible this year, whatever that's going to look like for y'all, you are going to be able to start seeing doors. Like, I see them everywhere. Ever since I have studied this, ever since I, like, uh, read and journaled and studied a lot of this and other in my Bibles, I'm able to read and then I see a door. I'm like, oh man, that was a door that instructed their protection, right? That gave their, that, that saved them from harm's way. That did this for them. That did that for them. There are all kinds of doors in the Bible. These are just some, these are just some of them. And they're a really good start for you. But now when you continue reading, you'll be able to identify doors. And you'll be able to, to tab it, learn about it, and know that that door is a sign of their salvation and a sign of their protection, God's protection for them. And I think that that is so good. So the temple door is 1 Kings 6, and we got 31 through 35 right here. 1 Kings 6. All right. 31 through 35, let's read it. For the entrance to the inner sanctuary, he made doors of olive wood. Where I'm going to go ahead and I like that. The, for the entrance to the inner sanctuary, he made doors of olive wood. The lintel and the doorpost were five-sided. He covered the two doors of olive wood. With carvings of, I can't say that word, but it's angel. It's a type of angel. Um, palm trees and open flowers. He overlaid them with gold and spread gold on the, how do you say, is it Chumbin? Chum, Chumberman? Chumbin? I don't know, but it's an Cher angel. Cher cherubim. cherubim. Thank you, Dina. When Angie ain't here, you got to be my word pronouncer, Dina. That's what you got to do. Angie always got me. You got to have me. Okay, Angie ain't here. All right. And on the palm trees, where did I take it? 35. So also, he made for the entrance to the nave doorpost of olive wood in the form of a square and two doors. We're seeing a lot of doors here of cypress wood. The two leaves. Of the one door were folding and two leaves of the other door were folding. On them, he carved, how you say it, Dina? Cherubim. Cherubim. I got to practice that word. And palm trees and open flowers. And he overlaid them with gold, evenly applied on the carved work. I'm just going to read that last verse because it's a paragraph in my Bible. He built the inner court with three courses of cut stone and one course of cedar brims. Listen, what do y'all think this door represented? So this isn't necessarily a, a, all doors are for protection, but this one, not necessarily. This is a door he wants people to walk into, right? Because it's the temple door. So what, what do we think this, this represents here? This isn't something that's going to lock them in or protect them from a plague or from a flood. This is something that's going to what? What do you think? Y'all don't tell me by the time I get this, this outline right here. I'll tell you. Is it entrance to um, blessings? Okay, I love that. Yes, go, Renee. I love that. Anybody else got one? Okay, so the temple door, it's a symbol of God's presence. So, oops. It's an entrance. An invitation, if you will, to God's presence. Because listen, 
Let me give you a little backstory. If you're in the mentorship, you know this, but if you're not, um, and, the, and so I need to give the background just in case so we make sure everybody's on the same page. The temple was, it had like three different parts. And once a year, the highest priest, which also goes to New Testament. Don't get ahead of yourself, Kelsey. Don't do it. Okay. Once a year, the highest priest went into this temple and offered a sacrifice for all the people. And that's how they stayed in right standing with God. That's how they could be in the presence of God, so say, is in this temple. God's presence dwelled in this temple. Now, God still operated in the Old Testament a lot like he does in the New. But the Holy Spirit had not been released onto the people yet. So he actively, okay, had to be with his people in the form cloud, fire, at the temple. He His presence hovered over that temple and it was obvious to the people. So the highest priest would always go in, okay, to, to that certain spot in the temple and would offer that sacrifice so that they could continuously restore their salvation or restore the relationship with God. All right. Today, we don't got to do that. Today, we got Jesus who releases the Holy Spirit on us when we accept the Lord as our Savior. Right. But it's an entrance. That temple was created just like a church today. Okay. Just like a church today. Okay. As an entrance or an invitation to be in God's presence. Now, you don't have to go into a temple today to be in God's presence again. You receive salvation. You get the Holy Spirit. Friend, he, he's living within you. All right. You always there. You always there, right? But you can go to these places to fellowship with other people who are like that also, right? So for that verse, uh, Macy, what I did is I kind of like, let me show you, which it's going to be kind of hard to show you because my Bible split it up. So what I did though, I call them like little brackets and I just kind of like put these little brackets around that whole section. So 31 through 35, I just kind of drew like, you could even draw a rectangle or a square, draw a highlight like around those verses and make you a little box. Does that make sense? Let me, let me know if that makes sense. Like make you a little box around those verses. Yep. And then do your little note. It's an entrance, an invitation to God's presence, right? Um, I got to add that part. Not me taking my own notes from a sheet of paper. <laughs> That's funny. I love this. This is nice. Okay. All right. Um, so we've seen that the door offers protection, and now we have an invitation to go and be with that, have that. So it's an invitation to what? If we're regarding it to salvation and it's an entrance, it is an invitation to receive your salvation, right? If that's what we're relating it to. Yes. Okay. And then also watch this. So wait, let me point you one more thing. You could also, I don't know how I would, So, in this passage, it uses the word doors, okay, for S. I guess that could represent Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But this also, let me give you a cross-reference right here. Oops. In your Bibles, you could write down this cross-reference, which we actually, are we going to talk about it? Yep, we are. We're going to talk about it. But this goes to this verse, John 10, 9. And we'll be there in a little bit, right? So I'm going to write that on here too, John 10, 9. Because this is talking about doors and entrance and invitation to God's presence. John 10, 9 says that the door represents Jesus. Jesus is the door. 
Ain't that good? This is why I'm an Old Testament girly, because it all connects. It all connects. It's all so good. Um, okay, next one. Y'all ready for the next one? All right, we're going to jump into the Old Testament, I mean the New Testament. We're going to go to John 10. So let's jump to the New Testament and let's go to John 10. Whoopsie. All right. John 10, 7 and 9. I'm going to organize all this nice and neat before I upload it. All right. Now, I want to give you a little lesson really quick before I read this. So I think because of the age that we live in, I've done let my, I forgot I even had coffee. There ain't nobody here to warm it up either. Uh-oh. Okay. All right. Um, so I think because of our culture today, I mean, and I let me just speak for me. When I read about sheep and sheep pen and all that, it's so easy for me to just imagine the sheep farm I see down the road, you know, like the big metal doors and the things that are going around it. And you don't always see the shepherds, you know. Um, I'm going to read that in a second. You don't always see the shepherds, but you always see the sheep. You know what I mean? Um, It's easy to imagine that, but can I, let me just educate you really quick. That is not how it worked during this time. How it worked during this time is there was a sheep pen. There was no door. The shepherd was the door. The shepherd would sleep. People had different shifts, okay? Shepherds had different shifts and they would sleep in that doorway. And they would protect their sheep if something tried to come and get them. They would sleep in that doorway to keep their sheep in and to keep unwanted things out. So the shepherd slept in that doorway. And when I learned that, and then I read these verses I'm about to read to you, it gives you a picture of Jesus that you'll never want to forget. Right? It's going to give you this picture. Watch this. Let's read seven and nine right here. I lost my place already. Okay. So Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, this is what you're going to highlight. I am the door of the sheep. Yeah, you are. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. Yeah, you are. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. That is good. Well, session adjourned. I feel like we got it. I'm kidding. It's not. We got some more to go through. Uh, Carrie said you're using that same look. I love it. Uh, yes, Macy, I have seen those. I actually have one somewhere around here and I cannot ever remember to use it. I cannot remember to use the thing. All right. So your note for this, and in this can also relate to, let's, let's keep reading right here. Go down to verse 11, and we're going to read through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He who, wait, he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. So about Satan right there. Satan cares nothing for the sheep. He cares nothing for me and he cares nothing for you. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Yeah, they do. Who's highlight this whole page? 
This, just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Yeah, there is. One flock, one shepherd. That's all of us. All of the people who receive salvation from Jesus. Um, and he's the one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I've laid down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down. Oh, it may have seemed like they took it from me, but they didn't. It was all according to plan. Um, I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up. This charge I have this charge I have received from my father. Now that's deep. It is so good, and that is so deep, Anastasia. I'm going to upload it to the mentorship, girlfriend, so you'll be good. Um, That is so good. We don't even got time for all that. We don't got time for all that, but that is so good. You need to, I, that's what I'm going to, that's going to be your little action after you get off here. Study this. Study this section, because Every bit of this is talking about how you're the sheep. He's the shepherd. The enemy doesn't care about you. And it also, I love that part where it's like, where it says uh, they can't take it from me. They thought they were killing him. Their whole plan, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, all them, they were like, we're going to kill him. And they put him on that cross and they're like, yes, we got victory. We took him. We killed him. And Jesus was like, LOL, BRB, in my words, right? Be right back. Because on the third day, he's coming right back. And it was on that day that he defeated Satan once and for all, my friends. So they thought, hey, I'm taking it from him. He said, oh, no, friend, you ain't taking it from me. I'm laying it down. I'm creating a door for my people so that they can get to me so that they don't got to stay with you. I'm telling you, that's good. That is good. If that don't make you want to get up and jump, I love that part. He laid down his life, but he was going to take it back up again. And he did it on the third day. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and I have the authority to take it up. Yes, you do, Jesus. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, and then it said, this charge I have received from my father. They thought they was winning. But all this came from above. The devil thought he so did and he was wrong. He was wrong, friends. Mm, that's good. But I am the door of the sheep. All right. Write down. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. Let me write that down. And I want you to also, so now that picture I painted for you. Oops, hold on. So that picture I painted for you, okay? Of like what sheep was, right? Like the sheep pen and the shepherds had to sleep at the door. Now I want you to imagine. We just learned we are the sheep. He is the shepherd. We enter in through that door into his into his sheep pen. And we're all there together. Yes, we are. And Jesus is sleeping at that door. He will not let it come in. And he'll do his best to protect you and you try to go out on your own. And I say do his best because sometimes you just, you a stubborn sheep. And you're going to say, I'm going to go over to Jesus. I'm going to go see for myself. I talked about this on Coffee Talk. I'm going to go see for myself. He gave you the free will to go in and out as you please. But I promise you, he stands at the door. He protects you when things try to come in. And if you happen to go out on your own, he's either he's going to come and get you and you have finally just hit the bottom. And he's going to welcome you back with a love and hug when you get back. That's so good. You learn all that from the prodigal son. Um, and I don't remember where the other story is. Uh, when he's actually teaching the religious leaders about what shepherds do with their sheep. 
<laughs> Anastasia. <laughs> I love that. Jesus is the door. He's that now connected to all these. He is the door that uh, gives you an invitation into God's presence. He is the door that will protect you from whatever God sends to this earth, right? He is He is the protection from the floods and, and the crazy things. He's the protection from it all. He is the open access. This is to gain access. Jesus is the door to gain access to eternity, to gain access to heaven, to gain access to the kingdom of God, to gain access to Jesus's presence. I'm telling oh, just got the cold chills. Jesus is the door. I'm also writing down, he is the invitation. My goodness, I didn't realize we was going to go to church. I feel like that's what we just did. That's what we're doing, actually. We ain't done. Ooh. Yes. Write that down in my Bible. Don't forget to tab it. Don't forget to tab it. You need easy access. This one's going to say, Jesus is the door. Yes, he is. I'll be writing really small. I'll fit all that on there. Right? Look, I fit all that on there. Don't know how I did that. But I did it. All right. Mm, I don't even want to move on, but that's that's fine. We will. But I don't want to, but we will. All right. The next thing. Let's go to Matthew 28. This is getting even better. Matthew 28. Can I share something with y'all as well? Um, I used to hate when somebody would be teaching me and then they started taking me to all these different places in the Bible. I did not like it um, because I felt like I didn't understand the whole story because we just kept jumping around. Okay. Can I tell you that if you're feeling that way, I want to tell you how to bridge that gap. You need to read the Bible in its entirety. Read the Bible in its entirety. Read all the stories. Read it from the front to the back. I didn't say journal it. I said read it. If you will read four chapters a day, just four chapters, you'll read your whole Bible in a year. And some days you will read it and you will not get a thing. You'll be like, oh, well. Lord, there's that, right? You won't get a thing. You won't, you, you'll be like, okay. Like, and you'll be like, well, okay. You know, you won't get a thing. But then some days you'll be like, that is good, okay? But what you need to do to bridge that gap between knowing how to jump around like this and it making sense, okay? And... It not making sense is knowing the stories of the Bible. Does that make sense? It's knowing the stories of the Bible. It's understanding that like where certain things are and where you can find other things. And it's understanding where some of the stories are. It's understanding the people. So like you need to, so when you get to the Hebrew Hall of Fame, which is what we call, which is Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about all these different people that had really good faith and um, had great faith, right? If, if you don't know their story, then you can't understand their faith. Does what I'm saying making sense? I want to help you bridge that gap. I used to hate it. And now it's my favorite thing to be able to connect the, the old to the new and the new to the old and this to that. And what it, it shows you how strategic. If you studied your Bible and if you knew how certain words connect and how certain things connect, like these doors we are studying, how they all connect. There's no way anybody could deny that the Bible is written perfectly. I mean, if this didn't prove it to you right here, 
Genesis 6.16, Genesis 7.16, and Genesis 8.16 was the whole story of Jesus in three verses. If that didn't prove it to you, continue study, right? But you'll never make those connections if you don't learn the stories. That's my that's my little that's my little thing. That's my little encouragement for you before we keep going here. Um, and I hope it makes sense. And I hope it encourages you to start understanding the stories so that that is how you'll be able to make these connections, right? Um, okay, next thing we're going to Matthew 28. One through six, friends. One through six. But not me already having that all lined out. We're about to do it again in a different color. All right, let's see. Now, after the Sabbath. Hmm. Hold on. Hold on. Give me one moment. There's something else. There's so I want to find it before I read that. Okay, uh, so actually, first let's do, let's highlight verse, chapter 27, okay. Oh, man, I lost it. Hold on. It's, verse, it's chapter 27. Okay, um, verse 60. Part of that verse says, and he wrote a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. So that door was closed. All right, let me put that on here too. Matthew 27, 60. The tomb door was closed. But not for long. I'm going to tell you, oh. Mm, going to get excited again. Hold on. All right. Now, 28, 1 through 6. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Mind you, that tomb was what? The tomb door was closed. It looked like it was over. It looked like he was defeated. Verse 2, and behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Now, his appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, and the guards trembled and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not fear for I, wait, got ahead of myself. Do not fear for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. Oh, he has risen as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. Ooh, that's good. That's good. I'm so grateful it wasn't what it looked like. Oh, Anastasia, that's so good. That is so good. The door was open. No tomb could hold him. I'm going to tell you what. That is good. Oh, I just can't. Hold on. The enemy. Nope, he don't get a capital H. He had won. The enemy thought he had won. It was over. But it wasn't. But it wasn't. That's good. The door was open. No tomb could hold him. He had risen. The enemy thought he'd won. It was over. Jesus was defeated and the door was closed, but it wasn't. But it wasn't. The tomb door was open and Jesus wasn't inside. You see, the very door that we have to enter for our salvation, all right, is a door that can never be stopped or closed by anybody else. There is no door that can keep Jesus from getting to you. And that right there is a whole message in itself. Anastasia, I love you so big, girlfriend. 
There is no door that can keep Jesus from getting to you. There is no door that can hold Jesus. He is simply the door that is offered to you so that you can get into the presence of God and be under his protection, under his umbrella. I'm telling you what, that is good. That's your note for that. I'm tabbing this. That's, you ain't got to tell me that's good. Like, I'm labeling it the tomb door. Ooh. The door that defeated Satan. Oh, 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 I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. And limited his time. Ah, that's good. All right. We got one more. One more door. Sure. Um, I am just, can you see it? I'm just using my, it's, I think stuff started falling out my Bible here. I'm just writing my little tabs. I'll take a picture and post for y'all. Um, but I just took tabs. So like I used the same color for each. I got the door of the ark. Uh, the door of the Passover. I think I forgot to label the temple door, so I got to go back and do that. Um, Jesus is the door, which is the shepherd, and then the door of the tomb. So, like, I just tabbed it at the front, and I labeled it what it was. All right, let's see. So, we got one more door. Y'all ready? Go to Matthew. Does that say seven? Hold on. I don't think that's what that says. Oh. Hold on. One moment. Can't read what's on my little guide sheet I made for myself. Actually, I had Angie write down all of my uh, verses I needed, and it looks like chapter 7. Oh, wait, it is. Okay. Yeah, I was right then. I did read it right. Okay, go to Matthew chapter 7. Yep, there we go. All right. I might put this over here. I'll make it all pretty later. I doubt this lets me do not. Oh, no, it did. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So our last one is Matthew chapter. Oh, wait, I don't know why I'm doing that. 7, 13, and 14. All right, verses 13 and 14. Let's read this. Are y'all ready? These are, this is what you're going to, you're going to highlight here. Enter by the narrow gate. Highlight narrow gate. Circle it. Highlight it however you need. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. So circle or highlight narrow gate. Whoops. Quit now. It can't be that long. The way of the world. To store. All right. Connect a note that says the way of the world. I'm going to do that too so that y'all have y'all have time to do it. So the narrow gate. Wait, hold on. Don't do that yet. Oh my goodness. What am I doing here? The narrow gate for the gate. There's a wide gate and a narrow gate. I think I read that wrong. My eyeballs are deceiving me here. For the gate is wide and the way is easy. That leads to destruction. The wide gate is the one you need to connect that node to. So the wide circle and narrow. Hold on. I got you. Wow. 
Applied Gate, write a note, and connect, wait, never mind. Wide Gate, circle that. Connect a note that says the way of the world. The narrow gate, the way of the Lord, the kingdom. There we go, fixed it. All right, <clears throat> so narrow gate. All right, so now let's read it again right here. The narrow gate, so circle or highlight, not a narrow gate. The way of the Lord, the kingdom. Circle or highlight, wide gate. Connect a note that says the way of the world. Now, finish reading it right here. Enter by the narrow gate. So it says enter. That's how you get in. That's how you go. You go through the door of the narrow gate that leads to Jesus and his kingdom, right? For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, right? The wide gate leads to destruction and it continues to say those who enter by it are many. So many will enter in to this wide gate. The wide gate is easy, right? It's easy. It's worldly. Um, but it leads to destruction. Right? But it leads to destruction. The narrow gate, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard. It's a harder path. It's a harder path to know Jesus as your Lord and say, I'm going to tell you right now, it's a harder path to live kingdom in the world. I'm going to tell you, it is. It's a harder path. But it leads to everlasting life. Right? It leads to eternity with Jesus. And those who find it are few. Right. I wrote a little note as a lifelong relationship with the Lord. Isn't that good? Like, and there's so many other doors in the Bible. You are going to learn about them. You're going to see them, um, especially now that you are looking for them, right? Like you'll see them because you know about them. And if you followed your sticky note, which I got to go back. I love that, Courtney. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to write all my little things on here so that I can put this sticky note at the front of my, oops, the front of my Bible. Um, I'm actually probably going to put a picture of it right here. But so I can put this at the front of my Bible as a little Bible guide, right? As a little Bible guide. But let's put all this together real quick. All right been a little bit over an hour. Let's put all of it together real quick. A door is to gain access or to deny access. It receives or it denies. Friends, I'll, I want you to be aware that every single day you are opening and closing doors in your life. And you get to decide what doors you open and what doors you close. Some of the doors you open lead to things that you do not want to go and do. And in that instance, you need to close those doors, right? Some of the doors you walk into are not doors that Jesus intended for you to open. You just wanted to. You get to decide what doors you open in your life and what doors you close. But all doors will lead to Jesus, especially when we read the Bible. We read Genesis 6, 16, and then we read Genesis 7, 16. And we learn that in the flood, God shut them in. God protected them from his judgment. 
And that was the beginning of representing salvation, right? The next one was the Passover door. It was protection again from God's judgment. Y'all, salvation and receiving Jesus is our way. Oh, that's so good. Of receiving protection from God's judgment. We all deserve the judgment that God is going to bring to this world. Thank you, Lori. Hope you have a great Christmas. We all deserve the judgment that God is going to send to this world. Every one of us. Care how good you are. We deserve it. And yet, he offers us a way out. He gives us a door. He will give us a door to walk in that when we shut it, we are covered by the blood. You have no idea how many times I plead the blood in my life. Things I will, I'll stop in the middle of Walmart if I think something's crazy. I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, can't cross that line. <laughs> you know, be like, ha, ha you can't cross that line. Right? You can't touch me. You can't cross that line. You ever heard that old song, Can't Cross the Bloodline? It's one of my favorite songs. He can't cross it. But you have to enter that door first. Right? Going through the door of receiving salvation keeps us from the judgment that we deserve. It offers us protection. Then we go in and we see the temple door. So first we learn that the door is going to protect us from the judgment we deserve. And then we learn that the door is an invitation to know Jesus personally. Right? And then in John, we learn who's the door? Jesus is the door. He is the invitation. Then we see the tomb doors closed and it looks real dark. But then we see that door open. Because no matter how hard Satan tries to continue to work in our lives, he still can't cross that bloodline. There is no door he can shut that God cannot burst through. There is no door he can close in your life that God cannot get to you. He, can, he just got to make you think you're stuck. He's just got to make you think you can't get out. But yes, you can. Because the door is Jesus, right? The door was not closed. They did not win. It was open. And Jesus wasn't inside. Because no door can hold him. And then we are presented with a choice of doors. In Matthew, you got the narrow gate. And you got the wide one. Which one are you going to be? Which one are you going to choose? The narrow path, it's going to be harder. But it's going to lead to everlasting life. And a lifelong relationship with the Lord. Which is so good. It's going to be a life worth living. I'll tell you that. But the wide gate is going to be a life that it might, it's going to be easy. But it's going to lead to destruction. And I promise you, it's not even really going to be worth living. I know people who are walking on the wide gate and I'm going to tell you what, they can pretend that they're happy, but yeah, I know you lying. I know you lying because the world will never satisfy you. Come talk to me when the world has quit satisfying you because at some point or another, it will. It'll stop. It'll stop giving you everything that you ever wanted and it'll stop being nice to you. But you, you come and talk to me when it's that time, right? It might be easy, but it's not going to lead to anything good and it's not going to lead to a fruitful life. So we learn about the door and what it does for us. We learn who the door is and then we learn about the invitation that we have to enter that door. That's so good. So good. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I hope this was super fun for y'all. What y'all think? If you're new to Zoom and don't understand, uh, there's like a little, there's a little meeting chat. You can, you can unmute yourself or talk to me. Um, or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can put it in the chat. But what do y'all think? Did y'all wonder, did, did y'all like the little journaling session and pulling it all together? 
it always starts out super close. So I or super slow. So I kind of get like, oh no, they're not, you know, they're not gonna get it. Um, but it all comes together. The door in John, I labeled it Jesus is the door. I labeled Jesus is the door. I love that. Okay. I love that y'all loved it. I'm just making sure that it like was good and y'all got it. Um, I love that. I'll make this as a little download and I will, uh, I'll share it. And if you are on here today, you can message me for it and I'll send it to you when I get done with it. And if you're in the mentorship, I'm going to upload it there as an extra. I mean, it'll probably be tonight before I get to upload it, but I will upload it today. I got to go finish Hope Boxes first. Um, and then I will be home to not venture back out to the shop until after Christmas. I love that. Dina, I love that. Um, I love that, Courtney. Merry Christmas, Macy. I hope y'all have an awesome uh, Christmas and just full of greatness. I know it's going to be. Let's just, you know, don't let the busyness overwhelm us, but instead, you know, it's a blessing to be busy. Sometimes it don't feel like that because, let's face it, being busy ain't fun. but it is a gift. Like it, it really is. You get to do things that maybe other people don't. Um, you get to travel, right? So instead of us being, you know, overwhelmed by everything we have to do, let's not let the enemy use that as a door opportunity, right? To make us overwhelmed, but instead an opportunity to open a door that fills us with joy. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Christina, they are. Yep. They sure are. So in the mentorship, everything's recorded um, and all the downloads are there and you can work at your own pace. We have times that we meet every week, but if you can't meet at those times, everything's recorded anyway. So uh, you can go back and watch and all the things. All right, my friends, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us before we leave here today. Um, Lord, we just come to you and we praise you and we thank you. We praise you for the opportunity to come together, Lord. We praise you for the technology that we do have, Lord, that we get to come together and study your word and be with you, Lord, even if we can't physically be in the presence of others. Lord, for making it easy for us to come together and study your word and learn about you. Lord, we're so thankful for the door of Jesus. We're so thankful for his protection um, from, from the judgment that we all deserve. Lord, we thank you for giving giving Jesus as an opportunity, an invitation to come to know you, Lord. And we are just thankful that you give us the opportunity to choose our path, Lord, and we choose you. Lord, we're just so thankful for all you've done and all you're going to do. I pray for the safety and the protection of those who are traveling and going about to do Christmas. Lord, I hope they remember that even if they're busy, the season is about you. It's about Jesus. It is about his birth. It is about the the door that you sent, Lord, this couldn't have come at a more perfect time. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, my friends. I hope y'all have an amazing holiday. I hope this was good for y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully we can do this again. Um, It is something I want to do more of. And it is something that is going to start coming with hope boxes. So, uh, well, they're not going to be hope boxes much longer, but y'all will hear updates all about that. But it is something that's going to come with our subscription that we are getting ready to start. Um. If you got a hope box in your letter, it's going to tell you all about the changes that are coming. And if you didn't get a hope box, you're going to see a post in the near future about the changes I'm going to make with our subscription box in attempt to change our ministry into what I really want it to be into the vision that I know God has gave us. Um, so y'all will see and be learning about all that here pretty soon. Uh, you're welcome. I love that. You're welcome. I love that so much. 
I love that. I love that y'all learned a lot. It may be surprising, but sometimes I'm like, don't they just <laughs> like, sometimes I overthink and I'll be like, and because I've studied it so much and because I know it, I automatically am like, oh no, am I even teaching them anything new? Um, I feel like that's <laughs> many times. So I'm so glad that y'all joined and you learned and you did learn something new. But I love you guys so big. I hope y'all have a fabulous rest of the day. Um, I hope y'all have a fabulous holiday. And maybe we get to do this again soon. All right? I love you guys.